gamers? I'm Jason. I'm Julie. And today on Dice and Dragons, we are going to be reviewing Five Minute Mystery, the latest in the five minute series of games. This is once again designed by Connor Reed and published by Wiggles 3D. Now this is the Mastermind Edition. We got the Kickstarter of the game. So there may be some content that differs from what you will get at retail. Not sure when it's coming, but hopefully it'll be soon. Now, Julie's gonna take it away and tell you more about the game itself. So it is a cooperative game uh, that is intended for one to six players, eight uh, ages eight and above, uh, and should play in five minutes. <laughs> well, this is a little different than Five Minute Dungeon and Five Minute Marvel. The cases will give you a timer based on what you need to accomplish. So you may have a case that is eight or nine minutes, it could be six minutes, it could even be below five minutes. Well, so I think the name works well because wouldn't you say the median time is about five minutes? So I said about five minutes. Yeah. You have four different difficulty levels from easy, medium, hard, to mastermind. What you're going to be doing is looking at scenes, trying to identify different symbols on a codex. You then check your codex with the back of the card to confirm that you got the correct information. After that, you will take a clue. You will try to match that clue to the culprit or you'll use the clue for whatever else you are trying to accomplish in your case. Now, each case is different. Don't worry, we're gonna take a quick look at how to play. Well, maybe I'll do a playthrough. Not quite sure yet, haven't quite figured out the solo rules, but you see the components for sure. So what do we need to do now, Julie? We need to grab our drinks. Grab our best friend. We're gonna take it to the table one more time. Gotta try that mastermind mode. Throwing me for a loop? What's that? doing it normally we have a drink and then I say it you said it before you're throwing me for a loop well, I have to add a little bit of mystery to this review aha uh -huh. I see where you're going there now let's take a look at the components for five minute mystery now we do get this very nice letter as this is the kickstarter version of the game so we get a thank you for backing from Connor Reed I always like when we get this you know just a little touch from the uh designers, developers, publishers, thanking uh, the Kickstarter backers for being involved with the project. Now this edition is also known as the Mastermind Edition. So we do have the rule book right here. It's very straightforward, as you can see. It is a fold out rule book. It's got everything that you need on both sides to explain how to play the game. And then for some of the Mastermind stuff as well as how to play solo, you've got that section in the middle that explains how those rules work. Now, we also have our deck of scenes right here, and we'll go over this one. So, minor spoilers, but you can see different shapes, like the star and the cross, triangle, and you'll notice those shapes are present across all of these different scenes. Got some that actually got mixed in upside down here. We'll just get that fixed up, and uh, we got exactly to where I wanted. You'll see that this is a different scene than the first one, the symbols, well, same scene, but the symbols are in different places. And that's how the game really keeps things fresh by having stuff that you may have seen before, but it's not exactly alike. So it's tricky to actually memorize the differences between all of the different scenes. Now you've got the codex, which you're going to be using to select the symbols that you see in the scene. We'll just pick a random set. And then you would check the back of the scene card to see if you got it right. If you got it right, well, guess what? You get a clue. If not, you do not. Now we've got the suspect cards, which we'll just take a quick look at. You can see a lot of the details, maybe an eye patch, gloves, scarf. This is a rhino, so they've got skin. We may have skin for Frank the shark. Now we've got a fox who has fur. We've got Molly, who is a bird. Not quite sure which one, but has feathers. And then we may also have like snakes and other animals with scales. So all of these suspects are potentially in every game and you're going to be trying to figure out who is the culprit, who stole the MacGuffin as you go through your mystery. So as you can see, we also have the reference cards for each player. So this can be played with up to six players. You can probably get away with playing with more, but I don't know how well that would work. And as you can see, we've got references for the clues and what all the different symbols are that you can find in the game. Now we're gonna skip over the clues for a second. We'll take a look at the cases and the culprits, and then we're gonna come back to that because I wanna show 
a little bit as to how a clue will work. So in the mastermind editions, you get these cases here with the M on the back. These are the four mastermind cases. Next, we have the hard cases. And this one is, I believe, a special one. You have to have the mastermind edition because it includes the red herring clues, which are only in that edition. Then we've got medium, which makes up the lion's share of the content. And lastly, we've got easy. Now, we'll just take a quick look at to how a case file works. So in the case of the double trouble, you get a little blurb as to what you're doing, the amount of time that you will have. So it could be six minutes, it could even be nine. It'll explain what you need to do to solve the case, how many culprits you need to catch. And we'll just put these back face down so that they're not distracting. Sorry, distracting. Next, we have the culprits, and we're not gonna go through all of them, I just want to pile them up. You'll see that they all correspond to a different suspect card. Now, in order to figure out who is the culprit, we're just gonna stack all of them up for a moment. We'll reveal the top one, it's Sarah. Now we need to identify Sarah. How are we gonna do that? Well, when we solve a scene, we gain a clue. So we pick a clue from the pile, and then we need to get to compare them to our culprit. So we're only gonna go through the blue ones. And of course, I'm going all the way to the end. So yes, this one has a monocle and as we're sorting through this, if we get incorrect clues, well, we can discard those suspects, and this will give us a hint as to who the actual culprit is. Now, if you can find all four, well, guess what? Your culprit will be readily identified as Sarah. Otherwise, you may have to make more of a guess. Now, I don't wanna show you all of the clues. That was just to show you how it works. There are four clues for each color, plus the red herring clues, which just throw you off and delay your mystery solving, just makes you take up uh, some more time. So there you have it. These are all the components for five minute mystery. Now keep it right here as I'm gonna teach you how to set up the game and then how to play. So how do you set up five minute mystery? Well, there is no specific way to set it up. I'm just gonna go with my preferred way. You need to have a stack for your scenes. You need to have the four stacks of clues. If you are not playing one of the mastermind cases, you'll want to remove the red herrings. If you have the mastermind edition, you want a reference card out equal to the number of players. And you of course want to have your different cases available. I like having them all out, especially if I'm gonna be playing multiple cases as I can easily then pick one. Now, depending on how many players you have, you'll be separating the suspect deck into an equal amount or maybe a little bit of an odd amount. As I'm gonna be teaching you this solo, guess what? I've got the whole stack of cards to myself. Next, you're gonna have the culprits, and I like dividing them up into two stacks. You'll want, of course, to shuffle them up, mix them up so that you don't know which is which. And for the cases of teach, showing you how to play the game, I'm gonna be moving the, uh, suspect, the culprits off there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick a case. So I'm gonna actually not, don't wanna have too many spoilers and have something that'll give me some time with the game. So we're going to ch choose the case of the grand opening and we must catch one culprit. So we'll randomly select a culprit. You're going to remove the rest of them. I'll actually place the culprit here and the suspects will go right below. So there you have it. The game is all set up and ready to play. We just need to use the app. Now the app is free to download. You do not have to use it. I just like to because it's fun. Let's make sure we got the volume up. It is so you'll be able to hear a little bit uh, as to what's going on in the case of the grand opening. Someone has stolen my MacGuffin. I'll wait 10 minutes before opening the museum, but not one second longer. Now it's nine minutes. All right, so you get a nice intro. We're ready to go. We just have to hit the play button and we'll be starting five minute mystery. And oh, so we're not uh, cheating or anything. You wanna make sure that your codex is set to the baseline of, that it is blank. Now there you have it. Now keep it right here as I'm gonna come back at you with a how to play slash playthrough of five minute mystery. So how do you play five minute mystery? Well, we briefly gave an example of this during our uh, component overview. So we're gonna teach you in detail right now. The game is already set up. 
you're just going to need to press play and start your case. Now I'm playing this solo. So normally you would need to correctly find five symbols and then you'd get a clue. When you're playing solo, you only actually need four of the symbols. You will not need to get a fifth one because you've got to manage this entire stack of suspects yourself. That is the only real difference. And other than that, it's fairly straightforward. We've got our scene in front of us. I'll be taking scenes that are used and discarding them off camera just to make sure that the play space remains neat. So let's get started. Three, two, one, go. All right, so looking at the scene, I gotta find the symbols. We've got a circle with the four dots here. We've got the star, regular looking star. I got a triangle with one, now I need to locate the cross, which is right there, or the triangle. As I found the cross, and this is a solo game, I'm good. So I just need to compare it, make sure that they match, and then I get a clue. So I'll take the blue clue first, and we are lucky. So the character does have a monocle, meaning I can go through all my suspects, and anyone without a monocle can be discarded. He's got a monocle. He's got one. So this is where, as you can see, uh, things can get a little long. And of course we get a, <laughs> it's mainly going through these cards more so than anything else when you're solo. You can see I've only, I've been on one scene, I've already burned through eight minutes. Well, not eight minutes, I've burned through eight minutes, only eight minutes left, but going through the cards, we still have a significant amount of suspects left. So, oh, he's got a monocle. So all the rest of the suspects these here can now be discarded. We've drastically thinned our pool of suspects out. So we've got the next scene right now. So we've got a star with a circle. I've got a triangle with three. I've got a square with the six dots. And then we've got the cross at the top. And I'll just pick this up actually. That's full, and because I see it, it's nice and easy. I'll get the fifth one anyway. Reveal it, it matches. So we get another clue. We don't need anything else with the blue clue, so for the sakes of expediency, get rid of them. Let's pick purple. Oh dear, only seven minutes. And nope, so does not have scales. So anyone here that's got scales? So that's Steven. So right now Steven is the only one that I see that has scales. So. Unfortunately, we got a lot more information that we need. And uh, we got the similar scene, but it's different. We've got the cross. It's just a standard cross. I see the square at the top with the four things. We've got the triangle with the three. And I need to find a four symbol. Uh, we've got what I like to call like a military style star. So we did not find the circle. I'm not gonna look for it. We'll just change the blank as it's solo rules. We're good to go, we get another clue. I'm gonna keep going with uh, what the culprit has, so they do not have fur. So fur, gone. Feathers, fur. Boom. Only six more minutes. Fur. So, slowly getting through this. All right, so here we've got triangle that's right there. We have the square, which has got the four. We got the cross already, and then we've got the star within the star, which is right there. So we're good to go. Check the match. I found the circle. We're good. I'm gonna keep going with this because one of these is gonna match. So it does not have skin meaning. Don't need to reveal the last one. We know it's one of the characters with feathers. So we're now down to four suspects. All right, so. Take a look, we've got the circle this time with the three dots, triangle with the triple. We've got a square with three up there. Then we just got a standard star. We did, well, the hall at one, we didn't find the cross. Let's take a look. We got everything. So we'll take Five green, pocket watch. So, can get rid of that. They have a pocket watch. Not the one, so completely useless. So you can see the more you go on, the harder it gets. We've got a square with four, star within a circle, 
triangle that's full of itself. Then we've got the circle. I'm not sure quite which one it is. Looks like the circle right there has got a lot of points around it. So that'd be the fourth one. Double check. And no, it actually was the 4.1, so that's a miss. I don't get my clue. So we've got the circle with the two points. We've got the triangle with three points. We've got the cross it's up in the corner. We've got the square over there. I do not see the star, so the star would be the one that I'm allowed to let go. We compare it. All right, we get another clue. I'm gonna keep going on green. So umbrella. So yes, we get a match with the monocle and the umbrella. Abigail, Sarah, Lucas. Well, there we go, as you can see. There's only one card left, if I did it right, that matches. So feel the culprit being Sarah. And there we go. We caught the culprit. Most excellent detective work. And that's how you play Five Minute Mystery. Now keep it right here as Julie and I will be coming back at you with our review. So Five Minute Dungeon, what did you think of the game? Well, I think before we talk about that, we should say how we played the game and how many times we played the game because that's going to actually uh, factor in a lot into this review. Yeah, so in this current... Uh pandemic reality that we live in we can only play games just the two of us the little man is still too young for us to try to uh, get him to play uh, yes so unfortunately it's for eight and above not eight months and above otherwise we'd almost be there <laughs> not quite <laughs> uh so we played it two players uh and we played it uh about 10 times 10 11 times yeah, we're definitely around that 10 to 11 mark. Some cases we played multiple times as we got a feel for it. Also, there were some that we failed. And uh, there were some that we didn't even uh, try again just because uh, we wanted to make sure we got this review out on, in a timely manner. We tried every level, though. Yes, we did. We went through beginner, medium, hard, and mastermind. Uh, so this is definitely not as chaotic as the other five-minute uh, games and uh, it's it's different. It's very different. The other five minutes uh, dungeon games, I'd say, are oh, dungeon Marvel. You're throwing cards down. You've got the timer. You've got the pressure. In this, you this you've got the pressure, but you need to be far more methodical than anything else. I'd say even strategic, because uh, there's a couple that we did very well in finding the symbols and the but we didn't find the right clues and after looking at it we figured out that we needed to be a little bit more strategic about which clues we were picking up and not just picking up any yes clues. that was for the hard case and then we tried a mastermind case we did not succeed however we went through 11 clues we went so that means we successfully solved 11 scenes and we still did not come close to winning now that part of that was the time limit and the pressure wasn't that difficult to manage that case with two players, actually. I think it'd be one of the better ones to play at, at two. It's just literally we had to go through an entire stack of clues. So we did not have any luck on our side. So there is that random element that I have to say if we're discussing the game, I don't like it. I do not like that random aspect, at least when I'm playing in a two-player format. Yeah, so the, the difficult part about this is for a lot of the different scenarios, uh, you have to go through uh, a deck of uh, potential culprits um, and eliminate culpr uh, culprits as you get clues. And well, it's not a deck. We have, you have a certain number of culprits, but they're selected from a deck. Yes. We, being two players, you're splitting that deck into... Oh, sorry. You said culprits. I'm confusing the culprits with the suspect. You're talking about sorting through the suspect cards. Yes. Yeah, that can be difficult. So we have, what, 18, 19 cards each when you're playing two players? I think it was more than that. I think it was more like 20. Oh, it's close to 20, like like I was saying. Actually, so, yeah. it says 36 suspect cards on the back of the box here if I cheat. So yes, you were correct. We had 18 each. Yeah, so you have to, at two players, when you're trying to figure out what the, the culprit is, so you're trying to get your clues matched to the culprit. You need to throw out the ones that don't match. Now you can try to wait and do it all at the end, but you know that's not really the point of Five Minute Mystery. That last guess that you'll get if you run out of time is supposed to be the last ditch effort. It's not when you're supposed to necessarily solve the case. You're supposed to be trying to do it before that. So besides that, I mean, I have, uh, besides the, the number of 
uh, of cards that you have to go through when you're two player. I would say from the car the game itself, I think it's interesting. I like the idea of the codex and that you're looking for symbols. Uh, the cards are very different. I find some of them are very easy to find the symbols. Other times, we looked for a long time, and so even, that one. Yeah, and there's always the one that you're like, really. Uh, even afterwards, after the we we look at the back and be like, what what's where which one was it? What am I looking for? And still couldn't find it. Yeah, the, that was during the last case that we played the mastermind case where, I'll be honest, that card sucked in my opinion. Not the trash the game, but I it was for a symbol that was a square. It's quite clearly a square, but the details that would tell you that it was the symbol you were looking for were incredibly not clear. So the other issue that I have with those cards that are similar it's a similar issue I have with the suspect cards is it is hard to tell the detail to be able to know what you're looking at and for sus the suspects when you're looking at whether they have a pocket watch or wearing gloves or wearing a scarf that's fair that's fairly clear but the one detail that I find is very difficult to see and you're supposed to see the background of the card is is that background of whether they have skin or feathers or uh and yes, technically you should know what that is, but their interpretation of skin is not always what my interpretation of skin uh, on some of the. And it's not pronounced enough. I think the background should be far more pronounced around the character. If you wanna, if you wanted, I, I, I would have preferred something like it's either it's a different color, like skin is, because you're trying to. This is supposed to be quick, right? You're not supposed to be sitting there and analyzing. So you know, it would be easier if they have, you know, they think they have four different types: feathers, skin, scales. Uh, well, there is some different shades of color, but it's all gone to the production value and the feel of the game. I, I completely agree with you because that's definitely what slowed us down a lot at two players. I think it would have worked very well if there was like a little like square or something that would relate just, to the color. Or just a different color, like skin is pink and feathers are purple and scales are, you know, whatever. Either that, but it they were too dark. Yes, they have a pattern in the back, but I was, I was looking at them going, is this the skin or is this feathers uh which you know you don't have time to do when when you're trying to do this you either there, there is a, a rapid element to this and it is important to be able to decipher i mean the other thing is like whether they're wearing a scarf or gloves that's fairly that's clear to see very clear that that's i mean so besides that this is you know it's fun it's new it's different from the others uh I'm going to come out and say I don't think this is a two-player game. I don't know what it's like at one player. Uh, I Normally, you do the solo reviews, so I, and you haven't had a chance to play it solo. So No, just uh, a little bit of the behind-the-scenes info here. We are filming the review before I'm going to do the How to Play, which may be my first experience playing solo live. So if you skip ahead and you'd like to go see a solo playthrough, well, that's probably what you're, you're going to get. So just so you know. Hit on back, timestamps down below. You can find it fairly easily. So I, I think we've talked a lot about our complaints with the game. And I do think... I talked about the stuff I like No, no, too. we did. I, I, there's a lot more that, that I want to talk about that I like as well. But suffice it to say, I think all of our complaints are primarily because this was a two-player experience for us. At three, four, five, six players, you're not going to have so many cards that you're going to be trying to figure out what you're doing be fairly easy to sort the cards by like you know scales things like that beforehand but it would have been nice and if they were do a second edition or a second printing just something to make it a little clearer that you can get the uh sort the cards at a glance would be very helpful now what i really like about this game is as you said the codex it's a great physical component i love it i like moving it it's a lot of fun it adds that tactile aspect that could almost be missing from the game because you're looking at cards so that is really I think a key feature also we talked about not liking the scenes I do love the fact that we've got similar scenes but they're always different and that really does add to the replayability of the game because even if you've like memorized a scene because you see it so many times that it's different it's it's difficult to Memorize every single scene because you've got maybe, I'm not sure the amount of iterations, but there's probably at least five to, between five to ten iterations of every scene in the deck of cards that you're going through. So that was very cool. And I like the uh, the clue system, the way the clues line up with the culprits so that you can figure out 
who committed the dastardly crime of stealing the MacGuffin. So that is very well done. But I do think the random aspect of the clues is a little disappointing because you can lose the game purely just because of the shuffle. Our last case, the mastermind, a little bit better shuffle. Maybe having the red herrings and the clues we need in the middle of the deck would have meant that that would have been a successful scenario for us. And I have to say the accessibility is very high. Like you could probably get away with playing this with someone that is much younger. Now, would you maybe have to fiddle with the time limits and things like that? Yes, but you could easily play this with a three-year-old, a four-year-old. If they like finding symbols and things like that, they can enjoy the basic experience of the game. Like I said, you know, probably have to fiddle with the time limit. Yeah, I don't think you're going to play this with a three-year-old. I, well, I, I, I don't, I really disagree with you on that. <laughs> you can, I just, I've been talking to people on Facebook as well as Board Game Geek, and a lot of people have been playing with kids that are that young, four or five. So maybe, maybe three is too young, but you can get away with four or five. People have done it. But they did say, fudge the time limits, don't be too strict on it. Just that the basic experience of the game is that accessible. This is going to be a really fun game to take out around Christmas, Thanksgiving. We just had ours. It's coming up in the U.S. If you can actually get together, hopefully it'll be <laughs> you're in an area that you can do that. This is a great also filler, not to say filler game, but because I don't know if I want to take this out, set it up in between sessions. It's not that difficult, but it's a great way to start game night if you've got five or six people and you're waiting for everyone to arrive. I don't know, Julie, is there anything that you would like to add about the game that you liked? No, I think that's it. So, five minute mystery. What did you think of the game? And you, you, I mean, you mean rating now? Yes, I think it's time for you to rate it. Sorry, I was, I was thinking about something I meant to do in the intro and did not say. We are going to come back and revisit this game. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with the channel, we do revisits now, not as often as we'd like, but it's something that's important to us. And this one, as we are not playing at what we think is the optimum player count, once we get a chance to play this at a higher player count, you'll see us coming back and updating our review. So I was gonna say, as a two, I'm gonna review this solely as a two player game, because that's all we can do. Uh, and as you said, we'll revisit it later. Uh, as a two player game, this is a six for me. It's it's passable. It's it it has some fun things, but it had a lot more that frustrated me at two players uh, than than I would like to see. And I have to agree with you, Julie. Usually we've got some difference in our reviews, but this time I'm going to say that it's it's a six. It's above average. It's fun. I can see the potential of the game. I want to play it. There's no way this is leaving our collection. I'm sure I'm going to have even more fun with it when we play it later on, but this is not something that Julie and I are going to play two players. For a five-minute fun experience, we've got five-minute Marvel, we've got five-minute Dungeon. Those play much better at two players than this game does. It's just a lot more fun. This just I, almost feels like a little too slow going through the cards, that it's not getting that sort of snappy, chaotic experience that I want in a quick game like this. So now it's time to remind you to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified when we have some new content for you. Also take a look down below in the video description, you will find links to all of our social media feeds, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You'll even find pictures of Julie and I playing Five Minute Mystery. Don't worry, we pause the timer, or the pictures are from before and after a case. It's not that easy to take pictures when I'm trying to sort through cards, but they are there. Then popping up in front of us are going to be linked to some of our previously released videos. So in front of me will be our most recent release. Then in front of Julie is going to be which one? Five Minute Dungeon, Five Minute Marvel. Marvel. All right, so I'll take you back to our review of Five Minute Marvel. So what are we going to do now, Julie? I'm going to grab our drink. Grab our best friend. Yeah, keep playing games. Keep playing games. Hopefully we get to play this with about four or five players soon.